Okay, good Good evening, everyone. It's 635. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, I know we'll be waiting for some of our other SD chairs to, to hop on, but as always, I'm respectful for, of you all's time, especially on a Monday. And for some of you, I know you have kids and it's spring break, so I do want to be very respectful um, of your time. Um, as we call this meeting to order, I hope you all are having a good week. Um, as you all <laughs> have seen, the past the past week was a very eventful one uh, with the primaries and, and, and trying to figure out our better ways and in, in, in restoring faith and confidence back into um, our voting process. But um, I thought the primary did well for us. I thought that um, you know we increased our turnout uh, by 10% from my understanding. So that's always good when we are getting more voters uh, to show up at the polls. Um, since 2018. So that was the good news. The not so great news is that since 2018, uh, our the Harris County vote by mail rejection increased by over 5,000% uh, due to SB1 law. So as you all know, we've got work to do um, we've definitely got to go educate our voters. We've got to put action in a plan. Uh, we cannot allow folks to be intimidated and feel like their voice, their voice won't be heard and their vote won't be counted. Um, so we're going to be ramping up our programs here um, at the party and making sure that uh, you know that, that that voters are being able to vote come um, not just in May but also in the November fall election. Um, with that said, Ashton, if you could please. Uh, Post the last CEC, I mean, the last steering committee meeting uh, minutes, please. I, I do have a quick um, item on that. They still say agenda. They need to be switched to say meeting. Um, okay. So before them, I start let reading. Them let them pull it up so that way you can make that um, correction. Yep. I am sharing my screen, just grabbing that really quickly. Right. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Okay. So there is um, some corrections that need to be made. Jennifer, you were saying that they need to say uh, minutes. Minutes. Instead of, yeah, instead of agenda. Oh, give me one moment. Let me grab an editable version. I apologize. Okay. Hello. Um. Okay. There we are again. My apologies for that. You're fine. Fine. It's on me too. Minute. Me. Minutes. It's got to say minute. I apologize. Do you want me to start reading? Or does the way we just yeah. want to invite let everybody review? No, go for it, Jennifer. All right. So uh, meeting was called to order at 6.40 p.m. The minutes from the previous uh, steering committee meeting um, were, it was mo motion by David Feldwish and Vincent Sanders second. Minutes were approved. 
report of the Senate district chairs. Uh, four was not available. Uh, I think Vincent has his hand up. Otis. Yeah. Okay. I only see, I'm going to let Jennifer go through it. And then if anybody has edits, we can go after. Okay. All right. Um, four was not available. Six passed. Seven, Angela Williams uh, reported they were reviewing new precincts. 11, April Lance passed. 13, Vincent Sanders. So they've had two meetings on redistricting and elections recap. 15, Gabrielle had not passed. 17, Elisa Gertz passed. 18, was not available. The Rules Committee, Rose Salas reviewed the changes to bylaws. Elisa Gertz moved to forward to CEC. Rose Salas seconded, motion approved. Primary Committee, Rob, is it Itchison or is it a season? Because it, Itchison, we usually is it Itchison. Okay, I've always, always, yeah. always well, said it wrong. Goes. I was like, he's on the call. So um, it, it, it says then, but you know, it's close enough. <laughs> okay, I have had three meetings. We will we will have reported that they there will be thirty hundred seventy five polling locations for election day, less than the twenty twenty election. 1224 deadline for final approval of sites. Jerry Bernberg moved to allow primary committee to approve election sites, seconded by Jill Moffitt, approved by the committee. Resolutions committee, Chuck Cruz, shared a document on changes to procedures, wants to develop a list of precinct chairs as subject matter experts. Fundraising committee, Chair Evagaru gave report fundraising update about the need to increase sustaining members and on the Rep Clyburn event. Audit committee, Adrian Azuna, gave an audit report for audit being finalized to resolve outstanding issues. List of recommendations are going to be tabled until the Q1 2022 steering committee, bookkeeping and treasury suggestions, along with possible new reporting rules for clubs and organizations, potential additional audits for precinct chairs on CEC attendance and van usage. Uh, no new business, uh, review and approve the CEC Agenda as postponement of amendment to pay precinct chairs, debate over amendments from executive session, vote taken and CEC agenda approved with change. Um, next, there was discussion about the next meeting and then adjourn, Rosal has moved to adjourn, Adrian is in a second, adjourn at 8.30. Awesome. Uh, Ashton, can we spell uh, Whip Clyburn's name correctly? It's spelled right. with the E. On the funder, yeah, there. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay, Deborah. Oh. Under move for uh, approval of the minutes, it said move both in the front and the. Oh, yeah. Moved by David Fedwish, Feldwich, moved. So there we go. Perfect. Okay, here's our last steering committee meeting. Uh, meetings, do I have a motion to approve? Deborah, do you motion to approve? Move to approve. Okay, Deborah, uh, motion to approve. Uh, any, uh, do I get a second? Adonica second. Adonica seconds. Do I have any opposed? Hearing none opposed, CC, uh, sorry, excuse me, steering committee meeting minutes from November are approved. Thank you, Deborah, for that catch. Thank you, Donna, for the second. We're moving on to our SD chair reports, and I'm assuming that our SD chair reports will be um, all about our SD convention on Saturday. So I will start off with SD4 with Philip McNutt. I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. Uh, we've been working on this, and hopefully, We'll get through this weekend. Uh, one of the concerns that I have is apparently someone or more staffers have relayed to individuals who have inquired about the convention through the office I, and uh, that they have been told that there is plenty of parking on the street and on the uh, in the parking lot uh, when this is not so, and that this is going to be uh, just a in-person only with the Senate district chairs. 
So we need to be sure that that point gets through. The other thing, Otis, I've been messaging back and forth between yourself and Marco and the Google Sheet. I don't know whether if any of the other Senate district chairs have been given access to our pre-registration list, but at this time, I can't access it. I don't believe you have the access. I believe that TDP. And so we've got to get that straightened out between you, us, and TDP so that we can work on our delegation list. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that for right now. So uh, I hate to be negative, but I just I just want to be sure this gets taken care of. Uh, no, not at all. You're not being negative at all. This is exactly what we have a steering committee meeting. Um, to answer your latter question about access to the to the pre-registration sheet, I've contacted Marco and told him that hey, our SD chairs uh, need access to the sheet. So hopefully they'll be getting that to you all soon. Uh, I, I also did not have great access to it either as I was only to be able to view it, which I thought was really weird. So I've, I've called the Texas Democratic Party um, to, to rectify that situation. I'm hoping that you all get access soon. Um, to answer your former question, uh, that is not, so what, what our staff is telling y'all, not people, uh, not the not people who are wanting to view the uh, SD convention pro forma. They're telling the SD chairs that there's parking in the street for the SD chairs, but that information is not being relayed to other folks who are wanting to participate. Now, remember too as well, folks are allowed to come in, as you all know, with pro forma, come into the office and sign. So we do tell folks like, hey, when you come in and you sign up to be a delegate, you can. Um, there, there will be street parking, but we have not told anyone. <laughs> This will be in person um, or plenty of parking for you all to witness. It's just purely pro forma. And then there's also some candidates and stuff who are wanting to come up and pass out literature just in case people do come to the office and sign up to be a delegate. So we've told them that, hey, you can be outside, but it's, it is pro forma. So we don't anticipate um, a lot of people coming to the office to um, to witness uh, just the virtual script reading of our convention. Sure, but, and I appreciate that. I was concerned because there was no staff meeting this morning to be able to address this issue. And uh, the fact that we are going to be, you can come out outside, but not come inside. And that, that not that we don't want anyone in there, but we're discouraging that and we're not set up for a full, full convention. And uh, hopefully folks will understand that, but I wanna be sure we're pushing that information out now and that we're not encouraging uh, any other outcome. No, absolutely. So hopefully absolutely. that happens. Absolutely, Philip. And, and this morning we apologize, you know, our, our internet went out this morning so we weren't able to have the staff meeting and you all can call in virtually but i know our staff will follow up with you all uh to let you all know and i believe we have a call on wednesday anyway again to update you all on what's going on and again we've been directing people to just watch the, the live stream um if they're wanting some of that uh joint convention action that we're going to be doing virtually thanks otis no problem. thank you philip uh Moving on from SD4, moving on to SD6, Yolanda Alvarado, you have the floor. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, well, our Senate district itself is ready for the convention. We um, have uh, been sending out, in addition to what you guys have sent out to everybody about uh, signing up for the, for the conventions. And so, and there are a few that want to become delegates. So we're doing that. Um, there are some people, I wanted to mention this, and I think Alan addressed this <clears throat> the last time I was talking to Alan, but um, there are some people that do not have computers and cannot sign up. Can I sign people up from my computer or is that a no-no? Uh, you're talking about for them to be a delegate? Oh, for the convention. convention yeah. Yeah. Well. I, I can't, let, let me say this, I can't imagine that's an issue uh, because 
it, it's just your computer, not you actually like you impersonating them. Let me check with uh, the Texas Democratic Party just to make sure. But my guess would be that's not an issue. Yeah. OK, so um, that's one of the things I was concerned about is, is signing up people who don't have computers or those who don't understand how to do it. Um, anyway, so um, and with the. Uh, convention, joint convention, we're working really hard. We're, we just, um, last meeting, we worked on the script that we're, we're going to use and editing that. Um, so uh, we're on our way. It's, we're, I think, I feel good about where we are. Uh, I'll be making calls for um, people, elected officials and candidates to buy ads for the electric um, for the electric, for the electronic booklet. So, and I think everybody is trying to do that. And that's all I have. Thank you, Yolanda. I appreciate that. Uh, moving on to SB7, uh, Angela Williams. Good evening, everyone. For Senate District 7, we had a couple of months where we did not meet. Uh, we resumed meeting and had our um, first resumed monthly meeting on the first Thursday, and we're going to start meeting the first Thursday of the month. Um, our, our goal after reviewing the reconfigured, redistricted uh, Senate District 7, we have 59 filled precinct chairs. We have 111 vacancies. So we've got a huge hill to climb but I'm confident that with um, us all working together, working with the pods, we still call them sections, um, we should be able to make some, some inroads um, in that regard. So that is a, you know, something good, but I think um, COVID has really taken a toll on how people go about their everyday life. And even with uh, being a precinct chair and being involved politically, I think that is, very much a true statement. So regarding the convention, I want to give a special thank you to Kylie McNaught and also um, Mark Malikoff. They have been extremely helpful and very responsive and making sure, you know, that we're coordinating with HCDP. So, you know, it's not only timely communication, but they're um, to me, they're making sure that we're communicating effectively so that the convention is a success. I think it is coming together. I'm a little disappointed that we don't have more ad sales, you know, at this point. Um, but the good news is, and, you know, the, the glass is always half full, would be that this is going to be an ongoing project. So even if people don't purchase an ad, you know, and have it show up on, on Saturday, there will be other opportunities for them to purchase and to see their ad displayed. So that's good. So that's my report. Thank you, Angela. Jesse, did you have your, Jesse, you had your, your hand raised? Can you unmute? Yes. Back to the convention on this coming Saturday. Uh, you know, when, when this meeting came on, I just got on the Zoom and there everybody was. I don't find anywhere I'm going to log in so that I, get in, so that I can get into the convention. I, I just don't know how to do it. And there's nowhere that tells me how to do it. Yeah, I believe there's going to be a reminder sent out. We're we're, walking, we're working with TDP on that to send that reminder out uh, with uh, with the convention folks that have signed up. And I and and the convention will also be live streamed as well. Go ahead, Angela. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, Jesse, and you're right. You know, we should be sending out reminders to tell people where to go. We should be able to go to the HCDP. Um, website and find the link for either the um, HCDP Facebook page or the YouTube channel. But we'll get that out so that people can watch. 
okay, because I don't, I don't find that either anywhere. So I need whatever it is that you said so that I can get to where I want to get to. Thank gotcha. you. Thank you. We can Thank probably you. add all, something. Fine. I was just going to say, we could probably just add something to the last reminder on the convention, um, you know, for people to see. Of course, you'll have to read it, but that would also be another suggestion. Okay, as long as I, I can get there, I'm okay. Even if I have to go to Egypt. Thank you, Jesse. Yep. Uh, yes, Philip. Am I misunderstanding? We can hear. We couldn't hear you earlier. What were you saying, Philip? Okay. It unmuted me. I, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Okay, uh, Jesse, I'm I'm addressing this to Jesse. So, are you saying that you can't sign up, or that this is for everyone to understand to read through all the writing to find the link to sign up? I can't find the link anywhere. I can, you know, I have everything that I have clicked on to, to try and find something. I have all the links and I, I have them on my computer here so that I can play with them all day long, but I can't find anywhere that tells me this is where you go. I don't have that. SD4 Democrat Facebook page has the link on there. And we, we also have a link on our website in our on our events tab. Um, it's on our website through our events tab, Jesse. And we've been sending out emails as well, too. Well, then I guess I need to learn English again because I can't. <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh, I can't eat anywhere. We can we can also talk offline, Jesse, as being an SD7. <laughs> uh, we'll, we can talk offline, too, to, to, to figure out what's going on. Because we've got people, too. yeah, and and Jennifer just put the link in the chat as well. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, okay, so that was SD seven on to SD eleven. I believe April Lance is on, but I can't see her. Key. Oh, there she goes, April. Hello. Oh, uh, yeah. So I was just trying to go back to the website to find the link um, because I've had calls all day from people who've gotten emails from the party who are confused about how we're all going to fit in the HTTP office. Um, so when the emails that are going out say, hope to see you there on Saturday, they're taking that as we're all going to the party office on Saturday, not it is virtual. It will be live streamed. Here's the link for that. Um, so that is that that does that communication does need to be straightened out somewhat <clears throat> because it, we have had a lot of questions regarding that. Um, we've been uh, in SD eleven. We've been working on, uh, of course, I've been working with the other SD chairs on trying to pull all this together for the convention. Back in SD eleven, we are working on looking at our uh, new list of precincts and the vacancies that need to be filled and following up with people who um, did not file to, uh, to keep those precinct chair seats, find out what exactly happened. Did they miss a deadline? Did they have somebody else in mind for that spot? Um, so that we can get all of that up and running as soon as possible um, to be ready for November. But right now, um, myself and all the other SD chairs have been focused on next Saturday morning and getting all of that straightened out um, to make sure people know what's going on. And don't, I'll try to show up at the party because we don't, we don't have room for hundreds, thousands of people at the party office on Saturday morning. <clears throat> so that is the biggest concern that I'm hearing from my people right now are just issues with where is the where is the link for the live stream? Um, because I've told them that it will be virtual. Um, they are having trouble finding that link. Um, I see that it is in the events tab, but it is not clearly demarcated on the main party page. Um, so if you don't know where to look on the on the website to find the events tab, it is 
it is a little harder and we haven't had anything going out um going out in the emails that I've seen unless I missed one for today that has that link um just like Jesse was saying uh, for click on here to go to the live stream of the uh, city district convention so that's my biggest concern for Saturday yeah, I'm not, in April, I'm not too concerned about the live link, but that live link won't get sent out until we actually have, like, we need a, we need more people signed up, number one, but number two, like, we always do that. When we have an event, we'll send that right. live link a reminder, so I'm not too worried about that. We are going to send out an explanation, and I guess we have to send out an explanation email telling folks, hey, what we mean by hope right. there is on um, is, is virtual. I think we've sent out plenty of emails saying it's pro forma and virtual. Uh, but I do understand the concern and, and I know our staff are taking notes just to make sure that we clarify some things. And um, Otis, if I could add to that, uh, we can actually include a live stream link uh, for Saturday. I can um, early make one and include that in the um, upcoming correspondences, at least to the researchers that I've been sending out. And uh, that might help uh, clear some of that up. Thank you, Ashton. Yeah, I, th I think that would help um, as we do have people looking already on the party site because, you know, Texas election code says it has to be posted on the party site clearly and visibly and easily found in a search engine with, for a continuous 10 days before the pre before the Senate district convention. And they're having trouble doing that. So however we need to fix it, it'd be awesome. Okay. I just want to, I just want to clarify that we have definitely been, uh, with oh. election code. I don't want anyone freaking out like we're not. We've definitely been within election. I'm just code. I'm just saying that that they're having, you know, that they're right. having they're problems. Having, like I've right. had some people call me and say, hey, when I go to this, it gives me the Texas Democratic Party convention link. But how are we doing this on Saturday? And am I carpooling to the party headquarters? Because there's no way A, we can all fit in the building and B, we can park. Right. So I mean I've been filling those calls all weekend. Okay, totally understand. I just want to make so, sure when you, when folks hear election code, I just want to make don't let everyone know well, we're definitely uh, in in correspondence with election code, but we will definitely make it more because well, we're sending out more correspondence the closest we the closer right. we get. Hey, so, uh, I mean, I, I see that that you have the you have the link and it brings up the things for the Texas Democratic Party Convention that has the RSAP link and all of that in there. Yeah, it's just a lot. But slide. yes, we need yes that it's. Pro forma, virtual, tune into the live stream so that there's no there's no question. Okay. Thank you. No hey, I just wanted I just wanted to say one more real quick thing that that uh, that um, link that Jennifer put on on there. That's one of the ones that I have been trying, you know, for a couple of weeks now to try and get something out of it, and I, I don't get anything out of it. Okay, we'll talk to the Texas Democratic Party too as well because we are working in conjunction with them. So we'll talk to the we'll talk to the state party. Okay, I, got, I sent Marco an email, and I said, "Hey, dude." <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully he'll 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 send me something. Appreciate it. Yes, Jennifer. Can you I just oh, dropped okay. another link in the chat, Jesse. It is the direct link for the sign up. Um, I think where you're getting confused is on the TDP's page. There are several places you have to click into it, but the link I just dropped in the chat, and it's my bit.ly link that I'm putting on my postings for it, but it links directly to the sign-up sheet. So yeah, well, the sign-up sheet, I have no problem with. I find, I find it all the time, and I have done my instructions, you know, those five pages that we have to fill out with, you know, this I was born Okay, this is just a direct sign up for people to sign up on. Um, one more thing, Otis, why people may be getting confused is the where you click to go look at your county location. It does list the party headquarter, but it doesn't say pro forma until the end of yeah. the sheet. So maybe if you can, if yeah, we'll have to, it to say virtual or something. Yeah, we'll have to talk to TDP about that and, and, and see if we can move up pro forma. Because I, I saw the thing too, and I was like, it's too late in the um, RSVP deal that we need to move it up. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you too, Jesse. <laughs> Nevra? Wouldn't let me unmute, I'm sorry. No, yeah, no, I had that confusion too. I was 
you know, confused about pro forma. Um, the other question I have is how do the committees meet? There's uh, rules, uh, resolutions. How will those, who's on those committees and how will they be meeting? Yeah, from, from my understanding, TDP is still trying to get back to me on that as well, too. Um, I don't know how they met in um, 2020 when they did a pro forma, but apparently TDP has some different rules and sex on that, too, and they're trying to get back to me on that as well. Okay. The other thing is um, SDEC members got lists from our different counties. I'm in SD17 now. Well, the, still the committee woman, but I've been moved into 15. I have forgotten to check to see if I signed up for 17 or 15, because I have to run this, the caucus at the state convention for 17, even though I live in 15. But we got the list that you were trying to see. I can look for the mine for Harris County, but all of the SDEC members should have gotten that list. And then maybe we can just forward it to yeah, yeah, no, I and I, uh, yeah, talking to Marco, it seems like the SDC members got it because you know here in Harris County we do it different with our SDC yeah. uh, system. We we got the various counties because yeah. I've been right. getting the new ones for SD seventeen good? new counties. Right, right, and so we'll and and so they should be getting the access uh, here uh, shortly. <clears throat> our SD chairs and not just our SDC uh, committee folks. Okay. Those people on that list, Deborah, is that the uh, ones who actually registered for the SD convention that you're talking about? I I didn't look at it yet. I didn't access it, so I can't be sure. But I know we got the list, and I, I I'm not sure whether it's the county convention or the state convention because I'm, I didn't. I'm access, guessing, I didn't open the list yet. I'm guessing. Um, I, I don't know. It came as Harris SD15, Otis, uh, and approximately 122 in SD17 for us right now. But it doesn't specify if SD15, if this is the county that's registered or the state. And that was that would be my question. It, it, yeah. it only says Harris SD15. Right. Adonica, would you look me up and see if I'm on your list for 15? Because I can't remember which one I signed up for. Okay, we'll take it offline. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and and for, for clarification, from what TDP has told me, it's both because if you sign up for our joint convention, they automatically roll you into the state convention, that the SDC members got those lists already, that it's just for both uh, joint convention and the state convention. But because we really are integrate, integral with our SD chair, um, platform that they didn't include our SD chair. So that's what we're trying to rectify. Um, well, the reason why I said that, Otis, because some of the names on here are right now in SD 15, but will be in SD, I mean, SD 17, their names are on SD 15. So uh, they will be SD 15, but right now, uh, because Deborah will be in charge of the state, but right. some of these names are SD 17, that's con that's where, um, redistrict it to uh, yeah. SD15. Right, right. And that's and that's on TDP. They're doing something weird where they don't, I think they're waiting till July for the redistricting. So that, that's TDP. But no, totally, totally understand um, what you are saying. Yeah, no, the way it was explained to us is that everybody got changed so that I am now in SD15, but the SD chairs have to still run the convention. So we're the only ones who have to stay at our SDs until our term is up Correct. in July. Correct. Everybody right. else has moved. Right, that's what I, yeah. And that's I mean, I'm like, I'm already moved, but I'm running the convention or the Correct. caucus, for the place I don't live. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying. I'm sorry if that wasn't clear enough. That, that's what I was saying that TDP is saying that SDC chairs are staying until the convention to fill out their terms. Correct. And Deborah, you are on SD15. Thank you. Thank you, Otis. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank Poe. you, Adonica. Um, Vincent Sanders with SD13. Good evening, everyone. Um, just as has been reported from the other chairs, you know, we've been busy with this joint um, um, convention. We did have a pretty successful fundraiser, and I just want to give a shout out to all of the SD chairs. 
We had a fundraiser at Chapman and Kirby on the 8th of February. We raised a little over $4,000 and um, I think everybody had a great time and um, got a chance to fellowship and get ready for the March primaries. Uh, we did, we've had two meetings uh, since our last uh, steering committee meeting. We had a meeting on February the 5th and we also had a meeting on March the 5th. Main focus is trying to, again, get things together for the convention. We did, as a Senate district, did talk about our concerns about the number of precinct chairs that registered. Again, we had a total of 71. However, we have about 113 that have not either still vacant or they have not signed up. So that's a major concern for us. And that's something that we'll be focusing on especially after the uh, joint convention. Um, March 1st was the primary, and I'm sure a few of us who either worked the elections or heard about the elections know that it was a pretty challenging day. We had a meeting with um, some of the, the election workers and some of the election judges on March the 8th to talk about some of the concerns. And um, we did have that uh, information uh, recorded. Uh, if anybody wants to take a look at some of the concerns, you know, um, you can reach out to me and you can watch the, uh, the video. It's a little bit over, about an hour and a half. But we know that there's concerns. We know that things are gonna to have to change. And our bottom line is to fix it make it better for May and make it better for November. So that's kind of our goals. For the uh, convention, I do wanna give a shout out to the communications folks at HCDP, um, Elisa, um, Ashton, Kylie, and a few other folks. They were able to produce a flyer for me and we were able to send it out to other uh, Senate district chairs. The concern was, you know, when you voted on March the 1st, you may not know where to go for the convention. So we were able to print up a few flyers. I printed up a few, you know, a couple of hundred to pass them out to my voters so they can at least know that there was a convention for March the 19th. So we're still blitzing, you know, our contact. I'm working my priest, my personal precinct to try to get additional information out. And um, we look forward to the Performa Convention on Saturday. Thank you, Vincent, appreciate the update. Um, anyone here giving an update for SD15? I see Ms. Hadnot on here. I'll ask if you wanna. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, Senate District 15. Um, as far as the convention, I personally have uh, registered myself. Um, and I'm, I'm sad to say that there's a really a very serious breakdown in communication between me and the, and the uh, chair. So uh, what I do, I do on my own and get my own information uh, because I'm not being, um, it's a communication problem here for me. I don't know about anybody else. But as far as Senate District 15, I have registered for the convention and plan to be a delegate moving on to the state. If Adonica's online, she can further give information if she has any. Uh, yeah, I can give. Uh, hi, this is Adonica. Uh, hi, uh, Ms. Gabriel. Um, uh, sorry for your experience. I have not spoke to Jonathan. He's been crazy busy working, I know, but for the SDEC part, uh, what I have known, I have put it on the website and did it again uh, for SD15. Uh, so hopefully we'll get more registrations out of SD15 with that. Um, we have approximately 122 who have registered so far. It is pro forma. We've been getting that out that only the SD chairs and the HCDP uh, staff should be uh, attending and everyone else would be virtual and it's coming. Um, we have put that out and right now that is all on my end. Okay, Adonica, am I on your list for, um, for the convention, 15? Uh, I will check and let you know. 
All right, thank you. I think that's all we have for uh, 15 at this point. Okay. Uh, at least that's all I have. Yeah, oh, oh, I also have had questions about um, how to be a delegate uh, and also issues with uh, well, not so much issues, people who want to be on committees. Uh, and I told them a lot of that comes from TDP and we don't know, but there have been questions in the, uh, in the emails. Thank you, Donica. Yeah, again, we're, we're trying to get clarification from TDP and I'm, I'm glad that you're echoing that, that sentiment. Um, Belinda, I'll get to you after we get through, uh, let's get through the rest of the Senate District um, updates and then um, I'll go to any, the hands raised. Um, that was SD 15, SD 17, who has a new Senate district chair, by the way. So congratulations, Lynn. I know you got, um, elected. I, I can't imagine you have much of an update, but I'm going to give you the floor. Um, yeah. Well, Lynn Greenwood. yeah, what I was going to say is that last Tuesday, SD 17 held an election and yay. <laughs> um, Nobody else wanted the job, but I do want the job. So I am happy to, to join y'all. I know some of the, the faces on the call um, and I look forward to getting to know the rest of you. Um, I know David Feldwich has been uh, playing a pretty important part in the interim. And so big kudos to him. I don't think he's on the call, but um, I'll be relying on him. So yeah, I have a huge learning curve but I will be there on Saturday. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate your excitement. And thank you, um, I don't know if she's watching, but thank you, Elise. I know you put a lot into being the chair of SC17 and redistricting um, really, really takes a toll on, on everybody and includes even our, our volunteers. So thank you for your service. And Lynn, thank you for joining us and welcome to the SD chair family. I know you'll do a great job for SD17. Um, on to SD 18, last but not least, Dwight Ford. Okay, uh, I'd like to say a shout outs to all the SD's chairs because uh, we are working hard together to uh, bring the uh, county convention together. Um, one thing I do wanna uh, say, um, as everyone knows, with all the redistricting and everything that's been going around, uh, and the list that's supposed to be going out, there are some, some as I can say, uh, shortcomings on some of that because I haven't been able to uh, receive the list for the uh, county convention as far as the delegates and stuff are concerned. Uh, Otis, I know you did send it out to me and it does say Harris 18. However, uh, it's not opening up for me. So um, you and I will have to try to uh, work on that. So whereas I can see at least how many people have signed up out of Senate District 18 for the uh, state convention and the county. Um, Jesse, uh, I just want to address you. You weren't able to um, access certain things. And, uh, and I know that. And I think you are a part of Senate District 18 right now. So uh, you and I, I'll reach out to you. And uh, if any way I can be an assistance to you for anything, you know, I'm there. So, um, and that's about it. Uh, like I said, um, my Senate district, it did expand because I did receive precincts from out of 17 and seven. So I'm looking forward to working with all the precinct chairs that are part of 18 now. It is a little bit different because um, when we caucus together statewide, we don't caucus with so much Harris County. We caucus with Senate district 18, all other 21 counties. So uh, I'm looking to see how that's gonna affect us. So other than that, uh, and we're working real hard towards um, trying to get uh, Coach Cam elected now that uh, he is the, uh, will be the representative out of uh, 132. So uh, we're really looking forward to that too. And, uh, and that's about it. Thank you, Dwight, I appreciate that. Thanks for all the hard work that you're doing and, and um... In, in SD 18 and I and I think that there's some other candidates out there too that that'll be running as well too that are going to do everything they can to unseat uh, Mike Schofield and Tom Oliverson and uh, Lois Kohlkorst and uh, <laughs> Jeff Huffman out there in the on the west side so uh, we look forward to, to working with you all. Um, that's it for the SD chairs um, update. 
I saw a few people had their hands raised. Angela, did you still have anything that you wanted to mention? Yes, I did. Okay. Regarding the rules and the resolution committees, um, TDP is taking over that, so we won't have designated committees assigned for the Senate District Convention. Um, anyone, and there was a communication that went out to all Harris County uh, Democrats um, that I believe voted in the primaries via email, asking them to um, complete, if they wanted to submit their own rules and or resolution, they could do so. And I believe the deadline for doing so is the 16th. So we won't have specific committees for rules and, and resolutions. We will still need a nominations committee or nominations chair and then a credentials um, committee that and these two, the, um, the nominations and the credentials, those are Senate district specific committees. And we do, a part of the script explains the process for the rules and resolutions being a little bit different this year in terms of, you know, what to expect and who controls that. So that's hopefully an answer to your question, Dara. Yeah, she's nodding her head yes, thank you. And, 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 okay. and I second everything you just said, because Marco just sent me an email saying all of that. And I had emailed him earlier today on that. So that's exactly Perfect. what TDP had usurped all those committee rules. So that's how, uh, what you just explained is how it's going to go. Um, was there any more, any, did anyone else have a question? Yes, Belinda. Yes, um, I too, as well as in, in Senate District 15. And what I was sort of getting from Jesse is I signed up for the convention. Are we not getting a link to vote on stuff? No, or is it, it coming soon. No, the, you, you'll, you'll get a link for the live stream. There will be no voting anything. It's a pro forma Senate con district convention. So there will be a, a script that I believe I'll read um, to you all live stream. And then we'll be open at the office for people if they want to come in person to sign up to be a delegate. But there won't be any voting on anything because it's pro forma. OK, so the way it works is and that's where it, I'm lacking too, like Jesse is what, oh, so you, you so we need to go to, I, I'm in Senate District 15 as well. So that communication is lacking because I don't see where I'm getting that information of to be able to discuss that with other people that are questioning. And so I, that's least on my mind because it's, it's Saturday. You know, but it's hard to, if you're not on the committee, no one's really telling you anything. It's really a hard thing. So that's all my comment for that. Angela. I was just going to say, if you all remember in 2020, because of COVID, even though we had training planned and we're going to have speakers and it's, you know, all day event pretty much that did not happen we had a pro forma in 2020 as well what all that means is that you do basically the required minimum um and everything else you know is handled outside of the convention itself so there's not going to be any training we're looking to have some speakers you know maybe the state senators maybe you know from from beto and that's it other than the required announcements and the regulatory, you know, things that we have to say to, you know, to um, have, you know, I guess, you know, meet the requirements for a convention. That being said, the biggest reason why we did not have a live convention was because of COVID and trying to find a space with all the uncertainty, given what we went through in 2020, it just was not going to happen. Um, so that's all it means. It just means we're still going to have a convention. It's not going to, you know, involve training, speakers, candidates, and all of that. You can watch it live stream. The link will be on the HCDP website. We'll make sure that everyone 
has a chance, you know, to either provide the link or tell them where they can watch it. Um, it'll be recorded, you know, so you can do that. And actually, if you wanted to, you could even now today go back and watch the convention for 2020. It's about a 20 minute, you know, meeting and it's it's pretty much all scripted. We gavel in, state what we need to state. Each Senate district gives a report of the delegate counts. You know, we have a few announcements and it's over half an hour, you know, max. Even if we have speakers, it's not going to be over 40 minutes. Um, it's unfortunate that we could not do something live, but it is what it is. And hopefully in 2024, we will be able to return to a live convention. That's all. Can I say something, Belinda? It's Yolanda. Did you say that you had already registered? Hello, Belinda. Never mind. Um, that's not. Hey. Oh, I'm go. trying to unmute. Sorry. Um, I, I have registered for the link for the county um, convention. I mean, the TDP link, whatever. I think I've done it several times. <laughs> so it's just hard to relate. I wasn't sure about, you know, I signed up for different things, but I just want to make sure that I'm eligible from the Senate. Senate level, I mean, from the from the county level, that there's nothing additional for me to do. That's what I'm not clear on. That if I signed up with the TDP one, I'm clear to be a delegate to the state convention. Yes, that's correct. Once you signed up, you are good to go. Okay, good. And Belinda, your name is on the list. Thank you. April Lance. Yeah, just to, to piggyback on what Angela said, like we did everything we could to find a location uh, before we had to have, before we met, got up against the deadline, and we met with uh, Marco from TDP before we made the decision to do the pro forma uh, and have that as a final decision because we simply could not find a location in Harris County um, that we could secure for the number of delegates we had. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, and I see, I think Chuck Cruz put it in the in the chat, that I checked back on that email from Marco about the rules and resolutions. The, the deadline for submitting those resolutions to, D, to TDP is tomorrow, March 15th. That's the resolutions deadline sent out by TDP. Thank you, April. And I believe it's due at 10 p.m. tomorrow evening. Let me pull that email back up. Um, okay, while well, April's looking for that, um, and she and I'm sure she'll she'll put it in the chat. Uh, we will move on to committee reports. Um, the first committee we have is the rules committee. Um, I know Rose is on the call, but she's having um, uh, connectivity issues. But she did want me to relay that she does not have a report on the rules committee other than um, they've been meeting monthly and they're continuing to review um, the rules. So that's the report for the rules committee. Um, the next committee that we have up on the on the item is the primary committee. Rob, are you still on? Yep, I'm here. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, thanks Otis and thanks everybody. I will, uh, I'll try to be brief. So the rule, uh, sorry, the primary committee met last week. Um, we had a lot to talk about because we just had our primary election. And obviously there were lots of challenges uh, during that election. We um, had a very long meeting where it was basically an open floor for everybody to share everything that they experienced during that election. I think the top, there are two top line takeaways that, that this group should, should hear, which is one, really mail ballots is the biggest issue. You know, all the stuff about late reports um, got the news, but the real big issue, as Otis shared at the beginning of this meeting, is the dramatic increase in rejections uh, for mail ballots. Um, and that's directly related to SB1. I can tell you as the former presiding judge of the ballot board that the current ballot board worked very hard to do everything in their power to qualify every ballot that came across um, 
them, but SB1 gives them no discretion. And so literally um, thousands of ballots were rejected when in, in the past it would be in the hundreds. And so I think uh, uh, Otis, you said it was something like 5,000% or whatever the ridiculous percent is, increase in rejection of mail ballots. That is by far the top line takeaway from this primary election. And that's bad news. Um, the good news is that the, the turnout was very similar to the last midterm primary election uh, when we had an incumbent uh, or we, where we were. We currently have an incumbent president. We didn't in the last primary uh, midterm election, and it was very similar. So I think that that's a positive uh, takeaway. And we, we still had this big challenge in mail ballots. And so we had thousands of our ballots rejected. That would have changed our turnout, obviously. So um, the primary committee met. Uh, we shared all the numbers around the election. Um, we, we really shared a lot of the experiences around um, how to deal with this, these uh, new um, uh, machines. That's the sort of, I think, the second big takeaway is that paper ballots equal problems. So anyone who's dealt with a, a printer in their office knows that when you have printers, um, you're going to have issues. And that was obviously a problem across the county. And now and we have a two page uh, ballot and it's going to be the case because we have big elections and we have somewhere around 90 races uh, on this primary election. And so that's why we have two pages and that those two pages cause paper jams and smudges and that sort of thing that uh, cause a lot of problems across the county. And so that's the other takeaway is that paper ballots equal problems, but that's just gonna be a learning curve. That's the hand we've been dealt. And the, the good news takeaway though, is that the primary committee really came to the table energized and ready to share best practices. And a number of our folks on that committee who I see also in this meeting, um, developed processes just by dealing with this in this last election. And they have a lot to share that they're ready to share with uh, election judges and our newer election judges going into the next and uh, you know, elections that are coming up. Um, and so what we are going to do, what the primary committee is going to do is spearhead some trainings that uh, we will sponsor to help out election judges going forward, dealing with the new equipment and best practices around that. Um, okay, so the, the last things I wanted to mention is going into this next election season, which is basically immediately upon us. Two things, one is that we have two elections coming up. We have the May 7th election, which is a standard, that's the general standard election. I think we have some constitutional uh, uh, ballot uh, initiatives on that ballot um, and some uh, municipal races, mud elections, that kind of standard thing. Um, but then we have our primary runoff election, which is literally right after that. And so the May 7th election ends on May 7th and the, pr the primary runoff, early voting for that election starts on May 9th which is two days after. And so we are now in talks with the Elections Administration Office about polling locations. And so they have asked that the polling locations, which Commissioner's Court designated for the standard May 7th election, um, be at least presumptively used for the, the following election, which is our primary runoff, which we have to then negotiate with our Republican counterparts. Uh, they, they have asked that we use that as kind of a, um, a starting point, that we use mostly the same locations. Um, and we've, we've said, OK, Republicans have kind of been mums the word on this at this point. They haven't communicated much, um, but I think it's in everyone's best interest. So I don't expect much pushback there. The one thing that I will report also is that it, we expect we haven't gotten official word unless Otis, you, you tell me otherwise. but. Um, Republicans refused to do a joint election for this primary, uh, which caused us to have only 375 locations instead of around 700 locations. And so we expect them to do the same for the primary runoff, which means we're going to have, I forget the exact number, but it's going to be 256, I think 265 maybe, uh, and 52 early vote locations where we had 
90 early vote and 375 for this election. And so because of the Republicans' refusal to engage on that, we're going to have fewer locations than we should, but we'll we'll push to uh, make sure that those locations are equitably equitably distributed, which I believe we did uh, successfully for the primary. Um, and, and so the runoff will look at which elections, of course, are, are hotly contested. Uh, the last thing I wanted to note is that, and this is a quirk of the election code, which we really just have to get the word out on, is that in the House District 147 race, there is a a really weird thing happening. And that is that uh, we have a vacant seat that is going to be uh, filled via a special election. And then we have for the same seat, a primary runoff election. Now, the vacant seat election will be the May 7th election. And that is going to be using the old precincts. So, you know, we just underwent uh, re-precincting and all of our house districts have new precincts as we were talking about with the SDs as well. Um, the vacant seat election will be using the old maps. So people who are in, who were in HD 147 will be able to vote in that vacant seat election. Right after that, literally days after that, we are going to then vote upon, and that is to fill that seat, by the way, immediately. Right after that, we are going to be voting in a primary runoff election under the new maps. And so there will be people who will be able to vote in the one election, but not in the other. And so that's going to be very confusing to our voters. And so to the extent that we can, we need to try to get the word out. This is a quirk of the election code and a result of us having an open seat while we're doing our prim primary election. So I just wanted to get the word out there that this is an important thing that we need to educate voters on, but that's it. Um, I think I don't have anything else, Otis. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. Always thorough. Okay. We have to be, especially with our primary committee and, and, and letting everyone know uh, what's going on. So I appreciate that. My pleasure. Um, yep. The next update will be Chuck Cruz, who, by the way, is running for office for HD 128. So thank you for stepping up there in House District 128 there, Chuck, um, with the um, Resolutions Committee update. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll keep this brief. Uh, we did not attain quorum when we were scheduled to meet on March 9th. I will drop into the chat the attendance, uh, not the names, but the folks present, the number of folks present and the delegation counts that I currently have. Uh, we were not able to attain quorum. We were one person shy and so no business was conducted. Um, in preparation for the Joint Senate District and Texas Democratic Conventions, I have submitted a single prior HCDP resolution, the resolution in support of the Texas House Democratic Caucus Quorum Breakers, which was passed by the 2021 Quarter 3 CEC on August 28th of last year. Um, my intent with that is I believe that they still deserve extra credit for their heroic effort in trying to prevent that absolute garbage bill uh, that passed and caused a lot of the problems that we've seen in this most recent primary. I think it bears repeating, and I hope it will get a... Uh, second chance to celebrate the folks and their efforts. Um, if the steering committee wishes another resolution, the only other resolution that has been successfully passed in my tenure as chair was the resolution uh, supporting censure of Harold Dutton for his treatment of trans kids when he was uh, in that <sighs> special session and um, I think that is an HCDP internal resolution and does not bear repeating at the larger TDP scale. I am definitely willing to entertain comments to the contrary. Uh, and if there are any other resolutions that people feel that should be submitted, please let me know because those are the only two that I have overseen. I will pause for anybody to speak up. Okie dokie, hearing none, uh, that concludes the resolution committee chair's report. 
Thank you for the update, Chuck. I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, this is a friendly reminder, you know, all of our Senate district chairs uh, are uh, slotted for um, appointments to each of our standing committees. So, and we'll do, we'll do our job too as well on the party side, as I have Ashton and Kylie on the call of calling folks who sit on these committees and make sure that they're showing up or if they want to move on, so we can replace them on these committees and, and making sure that we're, we're meeting quorum for important uh, committees like resolutions. Very much appreciated. No problem. Thank you, Chuck. Um, fundraising committee update. I'm actually having a conversation tomorrow with someone who is potentially going to be our chair. I've had a couple people say no. They're just really tied up with the busy um, election cycle. But what I will say, though, with our fundraising update is that we have gotten uptick in our sustaining memberships. I believe we're around 520 per month, which is amazing. We're continually to get calls. I know our staff here pretty soon are going to be making calls on Fridays, um, it, um, our Friday fund bank. Um, I'm looking forward to that. And then we're also starting to get, uh, because of the new rules, we're starting to get in preparation to write a new budget to proposed to the fundraising and finance committee as well too. So um, lots going on with fundraising and pretty soon you all will get an update about our JRR coming soon um, as well too. That is in the works. Uh, and so be on the lookout for that. We are excited because it's going to be in person for the first time, I think in a year and a half, two years. So uh, we're really excited about that as well too. Um, that's it for the fundraising committee. When it comes to audit, um, as some of you know, Adrian Ozuna has stepped down as our audit committee chair, and, and I, we kind of knew this was coming a little bit. Um, so we're in the process of finding a new audit um, committee chair. Um, I'm having conversations this week with some of the folks that sit on that committee that have shown interest. Um, and so um, that'll be great. I'm going to miss Adrian. He's still doing the work down there in Southwest uh, Harris County, making sure to get out the vote, turning out voters. Him and Eric, um, you, as you all know, are definitely on the front line and shining examples of what volunteers look like. Um, so really excited to see what else they're going to be cooking in the Southwest side. So uh, that'll be the audit committee update um, just because, you know, Adrian just uh, stepped down and uh, we'll be looking for a new chair. So that'll be it for our standing committee's updates. We're moving on to new business. Does anyone have any new business they'd like to discuss? Chuck, go for it. Just putting this out to the floor, I'm hoping most folks have seen the fraudulent uh, Harris County Democratic Party uh, voters guide for the primary that was intended to represent Harris County Democratic Party, but obviously was not. Um, I am open to listening to what folks have to say. My concern is that if we do nothing, we are encouraging the foul play by the people responsible for that flyer. And I believe that we need to take some form of action. I would think that it is a terrible thing to just let that go unanswered. If anybody else agrees with me, feel free to get up with me either here or on offline. But uh, if, if we don't respond to it, we're going to encourage people to repeat that action. Yeah, Chuck, and what I'll say to that, to, to, to piggyback off what you said, um, number one, we're talking to a patent lawyer about that. Um, the, 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 the problem is, is that um, they did a very good job of following all the rules and laws, bare minimum. I do know for a fact, and I can't just because of privacy sake, there has been an ethics uh, file uh, Oh my gosh, there's been an ethics charge filed on the group that put out that mailer um, coming from one of our uh, clubs and orgs here in Harris County. I've been talking to them and they filed the appropriate uh, paperwork to uh, file an ethics charge against the group that did that. Um, what I will say is that, you know, we, we all have to be aware. And thank you, Chuck, for bringing that to the attention of being aware of things like that. Um, folks are tricky. Folks are sneaky. And so, like I said, we're talking to a patent lawyer about that, see what we can do in the future so things like that don't happen um, again. And, and, and I've also to spoken to the individuals who are in charge of that pack as well, too, um, and told them that, you know, the 
I had a few choice words. Let's just put it that way. That can't be repeated on this call and, and told that, you know, that, that, that we were better than this and we shouldn't be trying to confuse our voters, especially seeing that we're taking um, an onslaught from the other side as it is already when it comes to misinformation and when it comes to suppressing our vote and things like that. One last statement. I, if, the, if this was in fact a legitimate quote democratic unquote pack, I firmly believe that at the TDP convention, we should take some sort of formal action against them. Even if we don't sue them or whatever, that as a, at the state level, we need to call them out for their dirty tricks. That's it. Thanks y'all. Thanks Chuck. Anybody else with new business? Okay, see none. We're gonna move to the approval and review of the CEC agenda uh, for the next CEC meeting. So Ashton, if you could pull that up. Um, And I will run through this. And then if obviously, if per usual, if any of you have anything that is missing, uh, please let us know. Um, we'll have our call to order, our Pledge of Allegiance, Secretary's report, the approval minutes of the December 14th CEC meeting, um, and then passing. So far, all we have is Chris, uh, Christine McQuarrie. Um, she is the wife of Precinct Chair Mel McQuarrie from Precinct 282. Uh, she recently had passed. Um, I'm going to pause here to see if there's any more passings you all uh, want us to add to the CEC agenda. Okay. Uh, Ashton, what we'll probably do is add victims from, um, oh, there's somebody in the uh, Jill added Charles Rollins. Um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Jill. I'm really sorry to hear that about your brother. Um, we'll, we'll definitely add that um, to passings. It's in the chat, Ashton. Um, and then also um, victims of the Ukrainian and Russia conflict, um, wanting to add that as well too. I'm sorry to hear that, Deborah. I'm sorry to hear about your sister passing away. We'll definitely add that to passings as well, too. It's okay if it's in bold, yeah. I was gonna say, we can change all that later. <laughs> um, Judge Deborah Yabara Mayfield, I know she passed away. Um, I know she was a Republican, but it's still sad to see her go. I know she had very friends across, a lot of friends across the aisle as well. I apologize, Otis. Could you repeat um, her name, please? Deborah Yabara, I B A R R A, Mayfield. I no. Yabara is spelled I B A R R A. I B B is in boy. And then field is F I E L D. Yeah. And then we had uh, um, Deborah Kerner also put her sister, um, Judith Anderson. Chuck, Chuck wants to rephrase the uh, victims of Russian invasion into Ukraine. I'm fine with that. Any, any other passings that you all want to add? And if y'all think of anything, please um, 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 things as well too. Um, 
oh, okay. Um, I saw, I see Ashton that folks have added, um, yes, the COVID, I, I, yes, that's a great point. The COVID passings that are still happening. And then Barbara, uh, Barbara Stalder's brother, David Stalder had passed away too. Thank you, April, for that. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's David Rice. Thank you, April. That's right. Um, and then we'll move on to moments of silence and remembrance. Um, if there's any ailings as well, too, if you all will put it in the chat. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head uh, from a political perspective. Um, and then we'll go to announcements um, from the TDP staff of trainings, um, of trainings, things like that. Um, for Ailings, Ashton, can you add um, for Mencio Reyes? For Mencio spelled F R U M E N C I O, um, and then Reyes, R E Y E S. Um, we'll have announcements from our ATDP staff. Uh, give you all updates of what's going on uh, with organizing our field, what our field program is going to look like heading into the fall now, now that the primaries are over. I know we still have runoffs, but we're shifting our focus um, into the um, general election um, and what our plans are and some of the events that will be coming up for the rest of the year. So we'll definitely have that for announcements. Then we'll have all our committee reports, treasurer's report, rules, primary resolutions, fundraising, audit. Um, we don't have any unfinished business. Um, we'll take up new business. Um, I don't anticipate any new business. And then I will give a report, <coughs> excuse me, and then we will adjourn. Any questions, comments, inquiries? Deborah Kerner? Just renumber them because we took out old business. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Definitely make that happen. For the, uh, uh, the new agenda extends out. Yes, Angela. I just want to confirm there will be no appointments for precinct chairs. No, no, we'll wait till um, June when um, the May, the elections are in May and then in June we will have those folks who uh, were unopposed, folks who won, and then any appointments that come in um, after the fact. Thank you. No problem. Any more comments, questions, inquiries? Will we get a motion to approve? Deborah has a hand up. Yes, Deborah. Uh, I move approval of the agenda. Deborah moves approval of the agenda. I have a second from Chuck Cruz. Um, second from Chuck Cruz. Any opposed? Well, never mind. Philip has his hand up. Yes, Philip. Philip. Okay, well, I guess Philip put his hand down. Um, <clears throat> second from Chuck Cruz, any opposing? I see none opposing. The CEC agenda for the next meeting has been approved. Thank you all so much for 
going through this process with us. Um, our next meeting will most likely be in June because that's when our next CEC meeting will be. I will keep you all updated as best as I can as I uh, usually try to do. Um, Mr. Jamal, I see that you have this Dallas Cowboys hat on. We got to talk after this call because uh, I, I cannot believe this this is happening. <laughs> but it's good to see you all. I, I just saw him and I, I just I'm excited to see your faces. I'm excited to see your faces on Saturday for the SD convention and then for our CEC meeting because finally it is in person. It'll be at the IBEW. You all are familiar with that. Um, uh, with with that location, we will all be sending out reminders. Thank you all so much for your dedication and making sure to be on the front lines of saving our fragile democracy. Continually organize, continually do what you do to get folks um, educated and motivated, so that way we will keep our gains in 2018. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn the meeting. Adonica gives me a motion. I second it. Vincent Sanders. I knew you were going to second. I knew. I was, I was going to say before you did it. I saw your face. Oh, man, that was great. That was, that was wild. All right. So, Adonico moves the motion. Vincent, San, Vincent Sanders uh, seconds. Do I hear anybody opposing? I do not hear any opposition. You all have a good night, and we will see you on the 19th for our SD convention. Hey, Dwight, can you hang on for a couple of seconds? Bye. Good night, care. everyone. Good night. Take care, y'all. Dwight, are you there? Good night. Good night, everyone. Jesse? Got unmuted. Oh, okay. Hey, hey Dwight. Uh, yes. I, I was trying to reach you, but I have neither your phone number or your email address. Can you give no. me some? 